All right, YouTubers, so here's the thing. Like, comment, subscribe, leave your thoughts and everything down there. But on top of that, can I get you to stick around for a little bit longer than a minute? Because my question today is, my friend asked me, what was the first sign after my diagnosis of being diagnosed with schizophrenia that I was able to look back and realize that there was something wrong with me mentally? So are you guys going to stick around and wait for this answer? Or are you guys just going to mosey on out and bye? Because I'm hoping y'all going to stick around and want to hear this answer. Because I have, now I'm an adult and now that I've been diagnosed with schizophrenia after my 2021 season and my 2022 season is all about redemption and, and is all about getting back on my feet and getting back in my kids' lives, getting back into a situation, a role as a father, as a as a brother, as a son, as a grandson, as 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 who I am, because who I am is Manuel is Manuel Ebrado Carlos Morales, and what I am is I am a son, I am a brother, I am a father, I am a cousin, I am a nephew. I am I was a great grandson until my great grandfather passed away. After that, all I know is. We don't have it. that gener that great generation right there is long gone now. He was the last one that I know of to be alive. But that's besides the point here. So what looking back, what memories do I have that can point in to the fact that I show that I had schizophrenic tendencies as a child or I was mentally ill and I didn't even know it. Alright, so I have this little passage written down. And it's five events. So I'm going to read it to you guys. Looking back at my childhood memories now on my 2022 season, I can say that I've always had disorganized thoughts. I just didn't know any better to question it. You see, I always thought it was me until my 2021 season when I lost control. But by disorganized thoughts, I mean random thoughts of hurting people or, or of fighting people. See, I've always had a vi had violent images of scenarios alternate what if runs through my mind. And, uh, and never did I question the heated rage that built up within. I just did my best to mellow out, which is honestly the truth. Because I've always had this, you know, whenever I walk by somebody, if you guys ever paid attention to your thoughts or anything, or you guys have you guys ever thought of, Whenever you walk by somebody and that person either shoulder checked you or something like that, or you just he just had a face that you didn't like or anything like that, that you in the back of your mind you played it a scenario where you were whooping that boy's ass or you were smashing that girl's ass, you're smashing that girl's face in or smashing that guy's face in and beating on them, right? Well <laughs> ding dong bingo. Yeah, I used to do that shit. I still do do that shit too. And it's not even by thought. It's not even by um, me thinking it. It just happens. And it's weird. I, I Sometimes I sit there and chuckle and laugh about it. But then that, that means I'm psychotic. That means I'm, uh, I'm crazy. You know what I mean? But I mean, it's even worse with me being diagnosed schizophrenic. Because then I have to, when they ask me, do you have any thoughts of hurting yourself? Do you have any thoughts of hurting anybody else? Do you have any thoughts of suicide? No, I do not. No, no, no. <sighs> yeah. Right? Okay. All right. So that's one thing. My fir very first image of that was, I don't know. I think I had to be like five, three, anywhere between three to five years old. We were fishing. I think I was three. And I had a dream that night, or maybe I was thinking about it, that they had a lucid memory of, my dad, I was a fish, a fish I got caught in a line. And it got real hard and heavy to hold the line, the fishing pole. And my dad and my uncles were like, Mijo, hold the line, don't let go of it, don't let go of it, otherwise you're going to lose your fishing pole and you're not going to be able to fish. Don't let go of it, otherwise you're going to lose it. Don't let it break either. So I'm over there holding it, trying to reel it in, holding it, trying to reel it in and everything. And then my dad comes up behind me to help me. 
And then I had a, in my subconscious, there was an image of him picking me up and throwing me in the river. Now, in 2021, when I saw that, I was like, I don't remember that happening. But it, it would come back and it, the schizophrenia and the, the hallucinations would come back and mess with my memory. So now my memory is a little brain fried and I don't know my, I don't remember what's my real memory and what's not my real memory. But I can tell you this, I have a whole bunch of stories I can tell everybody. <laughs> All right. So that's one event that I remember at three years old. I have another event at three years old where I was talking to my imaginary friend and I couldn't remember his name for the life of me until my 21, 2021 season. And his name was Lucifer. And his name, and he looked just like the Lucifer Morningstar Devil version uh, from Lucifer, the TV show, back in the day. So I'm not too sure if that's some soothsayer shit or if that's some crazy prophet stuff. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. I saw I saw the first depiction of Lucifer from the cartoon, not from the cartoon, but from the Netflix series when I was three years old. I didn't even know it. Oh. Forgive me, you guys. Forgive me. All right. So I I just did my best to mellow out. Well, now that my mind, body, and soul are completely uh, unorganized from holding things in and live events, life events. I buried along. A I buried along with the other deceptions. Brought to light by the voices and then pushing me to psychosis and hearing a year long psychotic break in 2021. I am able, I am able to, with a lot of looking back, tell I've been, I've always been a little bit off and crazy, but now never question it. It just thought, uh, I never questioned it, just thought I was having anger issues. You see, Shaq and Benji, I can point out five events looking back now, but before 2021, I couldn't. So what that, that passage is saying is before 2021, and Shaq and Benji being my friends, right, that asked me these questions. Before 2021, I couldn't point out anything that was wrong with me. I, I couldn't see uh, me being wrong. Like, I'm not saying that I was a perfect body and a perfect soul. But I'm saying that I couldn't tell that there was something mentally wrong with me. I always knew I had behavioral health problems and I knew I probably had some substance abuse problems for when I things had got hot, uh, all dark and gloomy and the dark times started to pass through. But I never thought myself to have schizophrenic tendencies or to have mental health issues. But when my mental health went out and my mental health went to shit, and I started hearing those birds talking to me and I started hearing voices coming out of nowhere and I started seeing hallucinations more than I already saw when I was already on meth. Because I'm don't get me wrong, I'm a, I'm an ex meth user. But on top of that, I am a recovering ex meth user, and on top of that, I am a I am um diagnosed having an addiction of methamphetamine. So, not only is dopamine rele being released into my brain and causing delusions, hallucinations, um, and mixed emotions along with uh, messing with my sleep and messing with my thought process and messing with my brain and messing with everything that you can think of in my body and making me rethink and relearn everything that I've ever learned in my, in my, in my past. I'm also getting told that methamphetamine, the one drug that I had always used to cope with loneliness, uh, basically, yeah, basically loneliness, uh, depression, anything like that, any, along all those other things I can't do, which, you know, is not a bad thing, all right, because the dopamine, the actual release of dopamine in my brain from the crystal meth itself would be worse off and it would be causing, I presume, more worst case scenarios for me and my schizophrenia and I having more, clo more close encounters with psychosis times. And I consider psychosis when 
I'm hearing those voices again. I'm hearing, the, I'm seeing those hallucinations again. And I'm thinking people are out to get me again. And right now, I'm not thinking people are out to get me. I probably should be because of my past. But I really don't know anymore because I don't know what's real anymore and what's not. Because I have this story called the World Mark. That's a different story. I'm gonna, I'll tell you guys that another day. But the thing is, you guys, my second event that I could tell that I, there was something wrong with me was when I started having fast, uh, lucid images and dreams of having sexual encounters with girls from my past, for one. Girls from, even from as a child, and, and family or not, I don't know why. When it comes to being schizophrenic, you have these tendencies to think that you're the hot shit and to think that everybody wants you and this and that. It, it, it comes from more than just having a chip on your shoulder. And it comes from more than just being uh, confident with your sexuality. And it comes from, more, from being more than just um, how you say... Uh, a little full of himself. You know what I mean? It's just one of those little hallucinations, the delusions that you get. And it's pretty funny because there every be times where I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm all hot shit, this and that, yeah, yeah. But then there's other times where I'm like, no, you know what? I got to be more humble and more kind. And I got to realize, yes, I am a good looking, handsome man, but I am not the, I am not what? I presume myself to be as the biggest, baddest, and most handsomest man in the world. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I can be. But <laughs> my delusions will have that thinking in my head. And I've had this since I was a kid. But of uh, having sexual encounters of me, ha me, me and every woman I've ever met having a sexual encounter. Yes, even those odd taboo ones. Yes. <laughs> And is it weird? Yes, it is. And here's the worst part about it. Was I aroused by it? The hallucinations and delusions have always made me, every time I've ever had a sexual hallucination or delusion or, or daydream, is what I will call them. Yes, I was aroused by it. Why? I have no idea. I don't know if that's the schizophrenia in my body going again because I have had sexual... Um, uh, tendency uh, feelings in 2021 when no one was there I felt like I was get, getting getting oral pleasure or getting having uh, uh, penile vaginal stimulation between a woman and a man when I was by myself in my house alone but that's not the worst part I forgot my tag and I'm live. But that that's that started happening when I was like about like thirteen of puberty style style, right? And uh, the beating uh pretending imagining pe beating people's faces in that's uh, that's always happened since I was about like three years old or having suicide like thoughts of people hurting me since I was about three years old. The, Lucifer, the, the spirits and demons things that's always happened since I was about two, two or three years old, and um, uh, the birds. When the birds was the final call. When I first heard the birds, it was twenty twenty one. It was January or February of twenty twenty one, and I heard those birds, and they. And they were just at first guiding me, and they were supposed to be part of the Sinaloa cartel, and I was supposed to follow them and make a run. And uh, they had caught one of my friends, and I was heated because they got my friends arrest. One of my friends arrested, and so if I wanted to get him out and I wanted this, the cartel's help, I had to follow directions from what the birds were telling me and what the voices were telling me, and the voices were in the birds. And the birds were telling me to drop my gun, not drop my gun, drop my knife, drop my watch, take off 
one of my shirts and my sweaters, turn it inside out, this and that, run down the street, no, now go get in that car, and I would go get in that car, and if it was unlocked, and if it wasn't unlocked, I'd be like, okay, well, I, I look around, and I'm like, I gotta go to that car over there, jump into that car, or, and if that didn't work, I would just keep going to, I found a house, and the birds would fly over me, uh, and I'm not too sure if the birds are real or not, if they were hallucinization or not. But the birds would fly over me, and and I'd follow the birds into somebody's backyard at, with a burnt down house, and I was like, I could just hide in the house, and the birds just kept whistling at me, 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 and talking to me and talking to me, right, and telling me to follow them and follow them and follow them, and I just kept following them. And I just started jumping in between big people's backyards, and then there was this one pool house I jumped in the backyard of. I jumped in there. And uh, the birds was like, get in there. And, and I got in there. And there was these little two backpacks. They told me to take my shirt off. I took my shirt off. I had two shirts on. And I put one shirt on back on. And put the backpack on with my shirt tucked in there. And I have emptied all my pockets and put everything in in that backpack. Put that backpack on. And then I'm running. I, I wait. I, it tells me to wait five minutes. And I, I wait longer than five minutes. And, and the voices, I'm hearing them and hearing them and hearing them. And so, hey, if you don't go, you're going to get caught. If you don't go, you're going to get caught. And the worst part is, I was sitting there arguing with them. And I'm over here trespassing on people's properties and stuff. And on top of that, um, I'm thinking that the FBI and the DEA are on to me for this old uh, gun shoot, this old shooting that I did back in 2011. And I'm all, damn, 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 damn. But I'm not even too sure if that shooting is real anymore for the simple fact that... Okay, I'm like, I know it's real. But it doesn't even matter no more because it's long gone and, and done. Right? And, um... So, that happens and I'm following and I leave, run out the house, out the back of the house, I jump, I jump the fence and then I'm, run, I'm walking, I get back onto the sidewalk, onto the street. I'm walking and it tells me to jump over to a couple other people's houses, and scale a wall, uh, climb a roof, and go break into this one person's house. And that this house was mine now, that the cartels had bought it for me, or a cartel had bought it for me. And uh, then I, <laughs> it got crazy. Uh, I ended up going into, jumping over to, into this one person's backyard. And they had an RV, and it was torn apart. And uh, I had a, claw all the way into it and, and out of it from where the engine would be at or the, or the bathroom would be at. I'm not too sure what, exactly what it was, but it was crazy and it's trippy as hell. Like, you think of some cartel, Sinaloa cartel or like uh, some movie, th theoretical movie shit. That's exactly what I was doing. Like I call it, they called it the um, Sinaloa cartel uh, tryouts. It was what the birds had called it. And then I, um, I ended up putting a blue dress on, uh, and jumping into this one lady, this one backyard, and they told they told me to get undressed to take my shirt off. It was just my shirt. I kept, I was able to keep my pants and my shoe and my shoes on, my boots on. And I put it. I had to put a blue dress on. It was, it was a pretty, it was a pretty dress. I'm not gonna lie, but I was told if I ripped it, I was gonna die. And, uh, and I had a scale of, I had a scale of wall and a fence next. And I was like, oh, holy shit. I was like, are you serious? Yeah. And so I did that. And then I'm over here strutting along this, along the city, along, yeah, along the city. And uh, it's telling me to go to these houses, move these flags. And the birds are telling me this. And I'm over there sitting there yelling back at the birds like, no, 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 no. It's like, I can't do that. And I'm going back and forth. Like, so I'm not just listening to the birds every time. I'm also arguing with the birds, and that is the worst. Case. That was the worst possible scenario because the birds, people out working on their trucks, working on their cars, uh, people out walking around. And some of the houses that I went to, people were looking out the windows, but not just looking out the windows. I actually had a knock on the door on one person's door with with that blue dress on. Thank goodness it was the last thing I had to do. And the the guy, it was an older Hispanic man. And he just looks at me, he's like, Pinchy Hotel, going off on me. And he's like, I was like, no, 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 I need my money, I need my money. Yeah, that part. 
A beautiful movie, right? No, not okay. Uh, okay, you two. So, with that being said, I go back to where I found a dress. I get my clothes back on. I leave the dress back where it was. It wasn't ripped or anything. It was a little stretched, but it wasn't ripped. Okay. And then, um, I take these little cards that they told me to take, and I go back to my house, to not my house, but to my truck where I was trying to save and trying to back up. And they had told me the birds had told me that they were there for my friend, backing my friend up. And I was thinking that he had got arrested and this and that, yada yada, from what they first told me. And they were talking about they were just messing around, playing jokes on me. So as soon as I get there, I call, I log on to Facebook and I call a pick apart, uh, uh, a, a junk car picker, uh, someone that pays for junk cars, $300, $300, $400 for cars and trucks, right? Call him, call them to pick up, pick up my truck and I was, I was out of there. I was like, you know, fuck this shit. This is, I'm done. Forgive me for my fridge. I was all, you know, forget this, right? And I got and I got out of there. I got I got I sold my truck and I got out of there. Well, here's the worst part: the voices didn't end there. They didn't stop there. The hallucinations didn't stop there. It ended up being where I thought people were putting me as a rat for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department where I thought I was being set up by the FBI and CIA and it, it got worse and it got worse and it got worse. And I can't even say it was all because of the drugs, but I can say it was all because of the drugs, because of drugs. Because of dr drugs wasn't the problem 10 years ago when I was selling drugs. To try to help my mom out with bills for the house. And that shooting never happened. And all the events that happened in 2020 and 2021, well, mainly in 2020, never happened when I, after July 30th. None of this stuff would have happened. I would have never had to have this stressful mental strain on my mind for me to have to worry about staying awake all day and night and worrying about a bunch of stuff because of the fact simple fact I would have never put myself in situations like that where put it like this in 20, 2011 I told this, I told the guy if this shooting ever comes back to bite me in the ass I'm helping whoever the hell I just shot at look for you uh, I'm helping them find you and I'm helping them kill you basically. And that shooting was uh was a sign of me being mentally ill too because the simple fact it was the first time me getting shot at and I did not hesitate. I told him give me that gun and if you're not going to shoot it because I'm going to shoot it because I'm not going to die or I'm not or we're not going to die or some shit like that. I don't remember exactly, but I took the gun. I jumped out the back passenger. I jumped out the back right, the back passenger door, rolled it down, jumped out of it, cradling the car, aimed and fired. And then all of I saw, all I remember seeing was poof, a red, red, and then pulling over to the stop sign, me getting back in the car, passing the gun to the homegirl who was at, oh, well, to my girl at the time, and uh, telling her to wipe off the prints after I had already wiped them down, telling him to switch seats with me to him get in my get. Out.